What's going on guys? My name is Ghost and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to go over the top 5 things that I think you should do when you start a new character in Dark Souls Remastered. So this might be some of you guys' first time playing Dark Souls, it might be your first time just playing Dark Souls 1, I don't know, but it is geared towards those newer players who have not played Dark Souls 1 before or have never played it at all. None of these steps are required by any means, they're mostly just designed to set you up with some good gear really early on in order to make the rest of the game easier on you, but I do highly recommend doing these things as they're all able to be done extremely early in the game, and most of them really aren't too hard. So with all these tips, I'm going to assume that you've beaten the Asylum Demon in the tutorial area, and the highest requirement of anything I will be sharing with you is defeating Taurus Demon, who is only the second boss in the game after Asylum Demon, so really not too bad. The reason for this is that some items are located in the Undead Parish, which he is blocking. There are also two items on this list that require that you have the Master Key, which you can choose as a starting gift or just play as the Thief class, he also gets that automatically, but I'll tell you the requirements for each one as we go, so let's just get right into it. The first thing that you should do when you're starting a new playthrough is plan out your build. This has no requirements whatsoever, you can even do it without even starting the game. If you've played Dark Souls before, you're probably familiar with the concept of a build, but if not, here are the basics. A build is essentially how you choose to spend all of your levels and what gear you decide to wear. In Dark Souls, I'd say that there are three overarching builds, those being Strength, Dexterity, and some sort of Caster. Since there are several types of magics to base a casting build off of, I'm not going to go over that in this video and just focus on the melee types for now. If you want a separate video on making a caster, let me know in the comments, I'd be happy to pull one together. But they are a bit more difficult to set up, a bit harder to play, so like I said, let's not focus on them for now. So the two main build types are Strength and Dexterity, or Dex for short, which I'll call it from now on. And the names make the two types pretty self-explanatory. Strength tends to utilize larger weapons that require a lot of strength to carry, such as clubs or greatswords, whereas Dex tends to use smaller weapons that require more technique to wield, like daggers, rapiers, katanas, you get the idea. Now the main reason that you should plan your build beforehand is so you only spend levels to meet the minimum requirements of your weapon of choice. For instance, if you choose to use a greatsword, boosting your dexterity level up to 30 is a complete waste of time and won't benefit you whatsoever. You really just don't want to be wasting levels like that, especially early on and especially if you're a new player. Those are really precious and you're going to want to spend them effectively. So figure out what you want to do before you go leveling up your character. Which brings me to my next tip. Now that you've decided what build you want to use, it's time to find a weapon that suits it. There are a couple of decent weapons that come with the starting classes in my opinion, like the longsword and the battle axe for instance, but you want to get an upgrade as soon as possible. There are actually quite a few really solid options very early on, which I go over in my other video here, where I show you the top 5 weapons that you can get very early on, with a few bonus ones. So make sure to check that out after this video, the link will also be in the description, but in that video I show you both strength and dex weapons that you can get almost right away. And just like this video, the highest requirement to get any of those weapons is defeating Taurus Demon. On top of that though, it's definitely worth checking out the Dark Souls wiki so you can get a full list of every weapon in the game and you can get a better idea of what you might want to use down the road and how you should be leveling up right now to prepare for that. The most crucial part of picking your weapon though is making sure that you can use it. Other than that, just use whatever you think looks cool whatever is fun it's really not too important I just don't want you guys wasting levels early on the next thing you should do is add some kool-aid mix to that Estes flask it'll taste so much better and on top of that everyone knows that the better it tastes the more it heals but in all seriousness, you should reinforce your Estus Flask as soon as possible. In Dark Souls 1, this is done by trading in Firekeeper Souls, which increase the amount of health your Estus Flask refills. There are only 7 of them in the game, but you can actually get 2 of those almost immediately, and I'll show you how to do that right now. So from here on out, we're going to be utilizing the highly technical method of suicide runs. Actually, not that technical. You just run past all the enemies, grab the item, and the inevitable mob of enemies that followed you will tear you to shreds, but that's okay. Make sure you don't have too many souls to lose before trying this, because you'll probably lose them, as I said. So go ahead and level up before you get going, which should be no problem, because you already planned out your build, right? So, number one. To get to the first soul, you want to follow this path I'm taking on screen. I recommend setting this elevator right here back up since you'll be dying at the end of this run and you might forget that you left it at the bottom next time you need to use it and accidentally fall down a really big hole. 
Hop off the elevator to enter New Londa Ruins, take a left and run across this narrow wooden bridge. You'll run into some ghosts up ahead which you can't even hit without a special item so just keep running, don't worry about them. There's a very, very narrow bridge just under the water right here that you can barely see, so carefully cross it and pick up the Firekeeper's soul, and the ghosts will they'll rip you apart. I'm sorry. The second one is located in the Undead Parish, really not too far into the game, but that does mean that you will have to kill Tara's team to get to it. I'll show you the path from the end of that boss fight as well as from the Undead Parish bonfire. So from Tara's demon, first of all, run across this bridge and go down the stairs to the right while obviously avoiding the fire. Kick down this ladder if you haven't already and then go back up to the top of the bridge. You can go through the bottom if you want, but I find this to be much easier. Bait the dragon into killing the enemies and then stand right here until he hops down. As soon as he jumps down, make a beeline for this bonfire, light it, and rest at it as quickly as possible, otherwise the dragon will breathe fire right in your face, and you don't want that, trust me. I've been there. Open this gate, follow this path. If you're relatively quick, you should be able to get through this gate before this hollow closes it. I would recommend letting him close it though before you kill him, otherwise all those enemies right there that you just ran past will follow you back here, and that's no fun. Now the item is actually straight ahead at the back of this church, but I'm going to take you to the next bonfire since it's really close and I'm going to show you from there. Just run up these stairs, across the bridge, past these hollows, across another bridge, down some more stairs, and this is the Undead Parish bonfire I mentioned earlier. From here it's very very simple. Backtrack upstairs, across the bridge, and head inside the church. Look to your right and you'll see the item. You can kill this big guy if you want or grab the item and run to this elevator. This will take you back down to Firelink Shrine, unlocking a very, very handy shortcut. The next item I recommend picking up is the Grass Crest Shield. It's extremely good as it increases your stamina regeneration and it even blocks 90% of physical damage which is a really nice bonus considering how useful the regen is on its own. Like even if you couldn't block stuff with it, it'd still be worth it. The requirements to get the shield are the Undead Parish Bonfire and while optional, the ability to kill a Black Knight would be quite helpful. Run downstairs past the blacksmith and run around this titanite demon. His ranged lightning attack is really easy to dodge and as long as you run by him fairly quickly, he should be too busy turning around to actually swing at you. You can just ignore these trees and take a right at the first available opening. There's a crystal lizard up here which if you kill it, it will give you some materials for weapon upgrades, otherwise just keep making your way down this cliffside until you find a black knight. There's no other enemies on the way so you're good to go. The shield is actually right below us at this point, one step down from where the Black Knight is, so it's really easy to just drop down and grab it, otherwise you can simply kill the knight or roll past him and escape back up the way you came. The last thing that you should definitely do is pick up some rings. I mean, how do you honestly expect to put down a boss without some ice on your hands to flex on him with? I can't believe I just said that. Why would I, why would I leave that in the video? Now, but there are actually a couple of unbelievably good rings that you can get almost immediately, but it can be kind of difficult. The first is Havel's Ring, which boosts your maximum equipment load by 50%. Very, very nice. It's almost a requirement for strength builds, especially if you plan to wear heavy armor at the same time. You can get the ring before Tara's Demon if you have the Master Key, otherwise you'll have to kill the Moonlight Butterfly, still a very early boss. If you've already beaten Tars, you can actually go kill it right now if you want to, but that'll give you access to the required key. Now then, to get to Havel, start from the Undead Berg Bonfire and run towards Tars, but instead of running up his tower, go down by unlocking the store here. This is where you teach Havel all about the magical world of backstab spamming, or parry spamming if you're feeling a bit saucy. This is really the only viable way to beat Havel this early in the game since that armor is so strong and the health pool is pretty big. It's actually a pretty tough fight since at this point in the game that club is basically guaranteed to one shot you. But if you're patient and focus on backstabs or parries you will get the ring in no time. Let's see now, the other thing on our to-do list was, ah, there it is, remind Lawtrek that this is Sparta. 
Oh, I remember now. That'll make sense in a minute. So, in the church in Undead Parish, if you head upstairs to face the gargoyles, you can actually take a different route and find a secret-ish room behind these wooden barricades where there's a man locked in a cage. Take this moment to laugh at him. If you're feeling nice today, you can free him with either the mystery key found in Undead Parish, it's in that room behind the armored boar, I'm sure you remember him, or of course you can unlock it with the master key. If you free him, he can help you with the gargoyles, if you don't free him, he will escape after you kill the gargoyles and head to Firelink Shrine. If you free him and kill him, he obviously won't be helping you or making it to Firelink Shrine, because he's dead. He will, however, drop a shiny ring called the Ring of Favor and Protection. He is pretty tough to beat though, since he's really aggressive, capable of parrying you, and his weapon can hit straight around your shield, so don't even bother blocking. Don't worry though, remember, this is Sparta after all. I told you that that would make sense in a minute. And sometimes Lotrek forgets that. So, just free him, let him escape, whatever, let him do his thing, and go back to Firelink. After you kill the gargoyles, meet him back there. He's right here by the Firekeeper. And uh, kick his bitch ass off this cliff. Just save and quit the game. When you come back, the ring will be sitting right here where he was. Good riddance. If you don't kill him, he'll kill the Firekeeper, which will make it so you can no longer use Firelink Shrine, which is very bad, especially for a new player. As for that ring, it's insane. Equipping the ring boosts health, stamina, and equipment load by 20% each. It even stacks with Hallow's Ring to give you an 80% equipment load boost if you equip both rings at once. The only downside is that if you ever unequip the ring, it breaks. So if you choose to use this ring in your playthrough, you'll really only have one other free slot to switch around rings for the rest of the game. If you ask me, it's entirely worth it. So that's all five, but wait, there's more. One last thing before I go, there's actually a third Firekeeper soul you can get, but I wanted to show you how to kill Lotric first because you have to kill him before you go get it. If you get the Firekeeper soul in the church that I just showed you and the soul that I'm about to show you, it will trigger the Firekeeper's death and you won't be here to stop it since it will happen the moment you pick up the next soul. So before you get this one, you have to kill Lotric. So assuming he's dead, here is the final Firekeeper soul. The final soul you can actually get without killing Taurus Demon, but it's got that Lotrek stipulation, which is why I didn't mention it earlier. Keep in mind that if you want to get it this early, you also have to pick the Master Key as your starting gift, or again, the Thief class who has it anyways. So head back down to New Londo again. While you're on the elevator, thank your past self for sending it back up, or curse him or her because they forgot and you just fell down a really big hole. I told you earlier. Head out and turn right this time and go up this tower, unlock the door with the master key, run into this cave over here and you can easily pass by these ogres. Now here is where things get a bit dicey. I wrote this script before Dark Souls Remastered actually released, so let's just hope I get more than 12 frames per second during this next part. Head down these ladders and then head over to this concrete tunnel where you'll face a toxic blow dart firing squad. Not exaggerating whatsoever, there's a lot of them and they really don't like you. The toxic debuff will really mess you up, so try to jump down here and get the Firekeeper soul before you wither away. Also, make sure you have enough health to survive the fall. And one more tip, if you're hopelessly trying to make it out of here alive instead of suicide running like everyone else, the dogs breathe fire. Have fun down there. To actually upgrade the Estus flasks, go back to Firelink, walk right down here, and speak with the Firekeeper. She's locked in this cage right here. Don't worry about it, she likes it there. If you talk to her, you can trade in the souls and she will upgrade your flasks for you. But guys, that's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned at least something new, something useful to you. But if it's your first time playing Dark Souls, good luck with it. Have fun. Grab those summon signs. Go PvP. Enjoy the community being alive once again with this remaster. If you like this kind of guide, this kind of style of video, let me know in the comments if there's something else you'd want to see similar to this. And of course, hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure you hit that bell icon too so you don't miss any videos because YouTube kind of sucks at their job and they won't tell you if I upload unless you hit that bell icon. But my work here is done, so I'm going to get going and I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good one.